Okay, I'm on. Today I want to talk about my niece, Jeannie. I mention her because of uh, I just want to lift her up, you know. Now eventually, most of the people of the world will see this, and I know a lot of you have no idea what that means, but you will later. And I want to uh, talk about her because she is a the best example that I know of, of of what I'm getting ready to talk about today. Um, she. <laughs> hey, you can preach next time. Okay. Um, the Lord said, "I send you out as lambs among wolves." And Jeannie is a good example of that. She stays humble no matter what. She keeps on loving people no matter what. Even though they do her wrong, they hurt her. She just, the, the, the wise thing she does is she stays away from people that continuously hurt her. And, and I do that too. I am a person's friend until that friend continuously shows me that they're out to do evil toward me. And that's when you need to just stay away from a person when they um, continuously do that. And, and you know, in encouragement I want to talk about uh, what is the reward of all that. Well, I want to go to First Peter 5 starting at like verse 6. This is what it says. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And that's what I want to talk about in due time. Right there because it's what it's talking about is God's time. It's not talking about man's time. Our time is, well, it's about time. You know, but that's not God's timing. <laughs> you know, when it finally does come, it's like waiting on heaven, you know. Somebody said, well, he's as slow as Christmas. But Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season. And that's God's timing. And the Bible says God is long-suffering. And you wait and be patient. Like it says right here, listen to this. Casting all your care upon him, the next verse says, because he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You know, now, the devil doesn't seek after your flesh like a normal lion. The devil <coughs> seeks after your mind. I had a dream about where this one person was possessed and, and he was after young men. And in this dream, he was a roaring lion. He was a... Hey, 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 hey. He was the female lion, and he wouldn't he wouldn't rip and tear at their body, but this this female lion would run and he would clamp down his mouth over the upper part of the head of that child. That's where where, where the mind is. He's after the mind. He wants to capture your mind from your youth, and even though these people obedient to the lion attack my niece she continues to stay humble in all that she does and she has been victim of this lion before but still she stays humble before God now the one thing she don't do as of now is being faithful to church if she was to be faithful in church man things would begin to go so much easier because see it's a lot harder for the devil to get at you when you stay in church when you're around this is like preaching in church be quiet over there in the back seat <laughs> it's a thingy anyway okay it's, it's um, a lot easier to stay in the place where you need to be in God because see when you get spiritually tuned in uh, some people says that it's like uh, God's filling station is the church. You go to church, you get spiritually inclined. Now, now listen, do an experiment for yourself. Go to church, and when you're done, 
spend the whole day in church. You know, go Sunday morning, Sunday. But anyway, take a check in your spirit and see if you see if you don't feel less like sinning. You feel less like pleasing your flesh after you've come out of church than you do when you come in. Well, if you live every day like that, I mean, you're going to begin to get strong and stronger in the Lord. Amen. And that's that's what uh, it, it takes to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And he will lift Good you up in due time. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, God's timing. Moses waited 40 years. Now, hopefully, most of us won't have to wait 40 years. But you know something? I've waited almost 50 years now. Ever since God spoke to me the first time, I've waited almost 50 years for God to move in the fashion. But we're getting really close to that. A lot of things begin to take place. And I'm getting to be more and more excited. The Lord has told me this thing's going to happen in an instant. I'm going to begin to share the, the blessings that God's going to pour out on me. My hands are going to be free and open for people to come and take the blessings of God. As God puts them in, people's going to be, be free to take the blessings out. And uh, God will make you that when you humble yourselves and wait on God and do season, God will do that. And he'll, he'll bless my niece for what she's done, and he'll bless you for waiting on him as well. Okay, thank you much for joining. We'll see you again next time. Another great subject right here, Cross in the Middle Ministry.